Hi and welcome to Virtual Eats Guru, where barbecue and grilling is made tasty. My name is Brandon Tanner and today we have a real special treat for you. If you like this type of content, oh, please like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video like this one. And so obviously we're not going to cook with the dog, but we figured we'd introduce the new member <laughs> of the family. So this is little Raina. Um, but anyways, uh, this particular cook, it's not going to be as much about the recipe. I'll still show you the recipe and what we're doing. Um, but a lot of this is going to be about the Thermal Pro and it's for, for uh, wireless. <laughs> so this episode is going to be more, not as much about the recipe, though we'll still include the recipe, but it's going to be about the Thermal Pro uh, wireless thermometer with basically four prongs. So that's new to me. I usually only have the two and I may use some other ones, uh, but the folks at Thermal Pro set this and not paying me for anything, but I want to give it a test drive so I'll let you know how it goes. And what makes this really interesting is we're doing literally uh, four pork butts, pork shoulders, um, and each one of them varies from eight to 10 pounds each. And so what I'm gonna do throughout this is just, as we've talked about before, kind of show you how things vary in temperature depending on the piece of meat. So it won't be completely uniform through the cook. Some will probably take off early, some may last longer. And so I'll really kind of dive into that so you can really get a feel for time and temperatures. Um, and I'm gonna start these out at uh, 225. And typically I go eight to 10 hours with that before wrapping them. I don't care as much about the internal temperature before I wrap them. I just like that time frame. And then depending on where they're at, we'll start dictating what kind of temperatures we do to either speed them up, slow them down, that type of stuff. I'm gonna give myself anywhere between 15 to 18 hours. And that includes up to four hours of rest time potentially. You can do more or less, but that's kind of the way I go about it. Um, so it gives you a lot of flexibility. And then typically I like to marinate stuff and do it overnight. But in this particular case, we're just gonna do it two hours ahead of time, keep stuff at room temperature so it can really absorb in, throw them on, and then uh, get after it. So again, we'll do some of the recipe, but I really wanna focus this time on the time and temperatures. So I'll go into depth as we go through that and you can see how each one of these performs differently um, and kind of prove that point of that each piece of meat does its own thing and then you know there's not and there's never an exact exact time and temperature so give yourself some flexibility is a good way to do it. Oh my gosh. Getting heavy? Yes. <laughs> Alright, thanks. Here. Using Worcestershire as the binder and Reels Bitmaster's Choice as the rub. Okay, so we're all rubbed up. We used Worcestershire as the binder. Got the real seasoning pit master's choice, which is spectacular. They do a great job with all their different kinds of rubs. And then, like I said, we're gonna get these, uh, we're gonna let these rest for a couple hours at room temperature. And then we're gonna probe them up and see how she performs. I'm actually gonna use a, a, a blend of maple, hickory, and apple. Um, as far as that goes, I like the flavor profile on, on these pork butts, but should be delicious. And like I said, I'll probably do a lot of different pictures and some narrations around how the temperatures are performing, the types of hours, the type of temperatures, and the whole nine yards. And you can see that these are uh, not exactly uniform in shape and size, so each one will perform a little bit different. And they're bone in, so that's one of my favorite because it kind of holds them together a little bit better. If they're not bone in, I'll actually kind of tie them up to keep them uniform, but with a bone, they tend to hang on to that bone pretty good and kind of go around that. And that also helps us know when they're, when they're done. So. Anyways, we're going to get after it. So I unboxed this thing. This thing is so simple and intuitive um, and it's color coded. One thing I did want to show you was the way that they have the probes and you can reuse this, which I think is really slick for managing the probes. You just take this thing out and just unroll them. And that's it. It just kind of clips in so you can reuse that. And that's really handy because I don't know about you, but I end up with a mess of my probes a lot of times. And then obviously they've got the color coding here. So that's, that's nice to have. Um, super intuitive to use this thing. It's got the magnet on the back. It's got the stand if you need it, which I like the magnet. It's rainy today, so I can cover it and put it in the right kind of place uh, to protect it. Um, and then the settings on it was easy. Like literally you hit probe and then you choose if, whether it's barbecue or meat. The barbecue gives you a high low and you got a couple settings here if you're using the barbecue piece. If you choose meat, it's got the temp that you're targeting or whatever. Um, and then you hit set, hold it down, turn it up or down. That's it. And you can go Fahrenheit, Celsius, I mean, that's super simple. Sinks up really easy. Uh, just piece of cake to use. So, I mean, that's from a usability perspective, that's, that's really simple and straightforward. So I like that aspect of it. Um, seems durable, like the feel to it. Uh, 
you know, we're gonna, like I said, I'm gonna put this on a safe place when I put it out with the with the rainy today, but I think that'll work out really good. And I won't be using the, the barbecue temperature piece because my Traeger itself already has that kind of built into it, which I can set alarms on that particular app. I would if I needed to, but I got four pork butts on there, so I'd rather have all four of those probed up. Um, I've set it to 175, not because I'm targeting that temperature. What I'm doing there is I'm basically going within eight to 10 hours, it shouldn't reach 175 internal temperature. It should be somewhere, I mean like lower between 145 to 160, right? Each of these will stall at different times, more, most likely. I just want to alert, tell me if it gets up to 175, and most likely what that tells me is my probe is in the wrong spot of the meat. So I'll actually reprobe it if it goes to 175 too quick for eight to 10 hours, because it shouldn't be there. That's too. That's probably too quick. Um, and if it is, it is. That's just strange. And so those are kind of things I look for. I also have an instant read thermometer that I'll use to kind of double check. Um, to make sure that my probes are accurate and that kind of stuff. If for some reason it's acting strange, that's that's what I do. So um, again, you know, eventually we're targeting somewhere between, you know, worst case 195 if it's been a really long period of time. Um, but we know that the bone will pull out easy. But typically, I want to get over 200 degrees and pull it and let it rest from one to four hours. So I like, you know. 201, 203, 205, um, but I'm within a range of 195 to 205 is where I want to be after a good period of time. So we're just gonna see how these perform. I'll take plenty of pictures of the temperatures and where things are at. We'll look at which one's which. Nice with the color coding, you'll be able to match those up. So looking forward to this. Hey all, so just want to provide a quick update. So we are about three hours into the cook and it's kind of really interesting. So. Um, I've got one that's reading at 93, one at 86, 99, um, and then one is 110. And it was really strange to me because it was like seems a lot higher than all the rest. So I moved my probe around a bunch of times, tried to find it the best place I could find meat, the whole nine yards, and it kept reading the same. So I actually used my trigger probe too. And so this one's reading at 110, this one's reading at 108, and I used my instant read everywhere I could, same thing. And so what it tells me is that one that one pork butt must have a lot more fat content in the center of it and fat always is hotter than the muscle and so this one the muscle must be mostly on the outside which means that fat's really going to run her down inside um, it's not right or wrong it just is uh, but it's nice to be able to calibrate so that one i put the alarm up a little bit higher uh, as far as my my timer as far as making sure it doesn't get to 170 because it's going to cook faster than the rest of them it just is and then the one that's at 86, that's a pretty big delta. So that one's got a lot of muscle mass to it. So that one's gonna take probably a lot longer than the, the other ones. Though it's close to the other, the other ones, but you can see that kind of range and variability. Um, but again, it goes back to this whole point of each piece of meat handles and feels different than the other type. So you also gotta just kind of look at what times have usually taken that kind of stuff. And I do like to have multiple probes if I can in one piece of meat to kind of move stuff around. I did calibrate these before, so I take ice water and get it really cold and dip them in, make sure they get as close to 32 degrees as I can. And they were all within a degree or two of that. So I know the probes are accurate. And now I know because of two probes that I'm right on the money. I'm within one degree of each other on one that's kind of an outlier, but that one just must have more fat content in the center of it no matter where I put it. I made sure it wasn't on the bone. I made sure it was in center of, of mass. Um, but it's gonna probably lean down. That'll probably be my leanest pork butt too because it probably has the most fat to render. Um, but it's gonna also probably register really high, really fast. And so I may let it go to more of like a, you know, maybe even a 205 type thing to really get it to break down. Um, and then again, there's one that's probably got a lot of, uh, of muscle content to it that's running lower. And that one's probably gonna take me the longest out of all the bunch of them. So anyways, I can't tell you how much the, this stuff makes a difference for having your thermal management. Um, and it's great also, you know, if you're doing any big groups or stuff, this stuff's for a birthday party for a big group of people. Um, and he's doing some briskets and stuff like that. But having, you know, multiple probes and being able to take temperatures and kind of just play that stuff through is really important. A little over eight and a half hours into the cook and wrapped with pink butcher paper. I always cook fat side down to protect the meat. Fifteen hours at 225, we've broken through the stall. <laughs> 